Because literally, I mean, the, the last warned, line just the says... The warrant is that... Like, they have co-evolved with others. Like, what? What is the warrant for? Why? The that's fact that they have evolved in specific ways. The fact that they are like they have like different similarities with us means that we ought to value them under humanitarian <clears throat> ethics because we have a level of kinship. Okay, before I start, can you show me what the new thing you added to the cases? I just want to see what I, it was. We wrote the second argument, the, the, like the second sentence in the RBI to be more. Oh, just argument. Yeah, we don't need that. Sorry for that. Does your definition of the top exclude any negatives or uh, uh, depends laws? on what your negative is? Obviously, it would exclude negatives that don't talk about animal rights. If it's about animal rights, if it's about my conception of animal rights, yeah. What kind of concept? What what conception of animal rights do you defend? Animal rights equals worth under a particular ethic. Oh, nice. So it doesn't mean like absolute rights. I mean that's okay. yeah. I'm sorry, I also need to read the third argument for why I don't have to defend all animals. But you have to defend like, more than two, right? Just like a reasonable amount, I guess? Yeah. Okay. One forty five remaining. The order is NCAC. Do you have a stand? I just don't want to take it out. Because animal rights are inconsistent with the meaning of normative words that negate the value is just as defined as giving each their due. Although we can debate what each is due, it is fundamentally impossible to escape the boundaries of our language. Normativity is found in the meaning of the terms that we use, not in objective external facts. Now, Tull explains the waking sign. 
The task of philosophy is to reveal and clarify meanings of bad in language rather than construct theories concerning what is understood to be the external reality. This is because we cannot escape language. The limits of my language means the limits of my world. Instead of seeking to explore the outside reality, what matters is understanding language. Rules of life are dressed up in pictures, and these pictures can only serve to describe what we are to do, not justify it. Instead of forming theoretical justifications for moral action, the most fruitful thing is to look at normative meanings in inherent language. Meanings are anchored in the rules of language. Used in this sense, ethics reflect on what is conceivable and what ways we can use given terms without losing their meaning. Because we are limited to the terms we use, morality can only be found within the meaning embedded in language structures. Therefore, the standards consistent in language structures, conceptions just that cause normative terms to lose their meaning, are nonsensical and self-defeating and must be rejected. I contend the consistent in language structure demands a non-recognition and a rise. There are two justifications. First, the belief that humans are a special value lies at the very base of normative language. This deep belief cannot be challenged by any moral theory. Giving animals any degree of that value is a form of meaning blindness. al tula. Only human beings are individual in the meaningful sense of the term. The belief in the special size of human being walks hand in hand with the belief that animals are both descriptive and prescriptive, very different humans, their nature and values are less significant. Claims of human and animal equality are from a form of meaning blindness for they make no sense in relation to our language games. The deepest point of our ethics there is the conception of individuality that is groundless, that is groundless form from our attachment just by needed by reason or merit. Humans are special value, this is a basic meaning that cannot be contested to be a moral theory alone. Any form of ethics relies on, any con- on a conception of individuality, this, con- this concept cannot exist unless humans are always part of a separate moral category. And we derive our concept of special moral status from the fundamental idea that humans must be respected, being animals as special results, uh, special results in devaluation of all life being your rights meaningless. Shaman. Consider the consequence of theory which does not distinguish between animal life and human life. As the concept of rights expand to include the claims of all living creatures, this concept will lose much of its force and animal human and human rights would suffer as a consequence. If it is once observed that there is no difference between dogs, flies, or tape or bacteria, the conclusion likely will be drawn is that there is so, so much wrong that we cannot help do, do, uh, doing to the brute creation that it is best not to trouble ourselves about any more at all. The ultimate sufferers are likely to be fellow, our fellow men because the final conclusion is likely to be not that we ought to treat the animals like human beings, but that we should treat human beings like animals. Extension of this principle leads straight to Auschwitz with the Jewel poles uh, to the place of the Colorado Beale. Thus in the game. Now to the affirmative case. First, you should air and egg on these issues, on all the spices being in the case. I should, I should have uh, the ability to respond to these arguments in the 2NR, namely respond to the function of these arguments and how they actually apply to specific negative positions. The point where she's reading like over like 35 different spikes, I'm not going to respond to the, the warrants in the NC. I'll respond like why none of those apply to the NC, because the NC is like a unique position that her, uh, her uh, spikes don't apply to. Now go to commu- a, a group tailor. The two tailor ends. First, identity is not based on membership categories, based on individual reflection. That reflection is what drives obligation. Two, humans drive concepts of self from concepts of reason. This reasoning is what, is what drives moral obligation. Three, she's coming the fallacy of origin. Just because morality comes from the community does not entail that that community is what we care about. In the same way, suppose water is infinitely valuable. The reason it's infinitely valuable is not because water comes from the pipe, but because there's an intrinsic goodness in the water pipe. It's just that the community is not sacred. Four, com- the community forms the reflections we have. I, I have certain reflections because I came from this community, but that does not mean the community is a morally relevant consideration. Morality is based on reflection. And five, the community providing those uh, things is proof that the community does not have those rights. Those things are, are transferred to an individual. If you're a mailman, if the mailman gives mail to an individual, that mailman doesn't have a right to read your mail. Individuals should be able to take advantage of their own rights in the same way that the community does not have a right to the individuals. Six. Her argument is non sacred Just because the self is constant of the community does not, does not entail that justice, 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 justice. Justice is supposed to transcend the self. This means her framework is not an analysis of justice whatsoever. So it is about uh, an analysis of the self. Seven. She's committing the fallacy of affirming the consequence. She says if you are self and you are in a community, she proves animals in the community, but does not mean that they are self in the sense Taylor is talking about. As an under- underview to her framer, she needs reasons why animals are part of the community. That must be a relevant feature of the community. All the contentional of cards, as an Einstein cross examination, give different features than her framer. There's a disconnect from what her framework understands the community and contention, uh, and what her, fr- her framework said understands the community and what her contention says. And Fox explains what is actually required to be in a moral community. Beings that belong to a moral community must be, must be by their nature capable of function within, they, uh, within one. They must, be, they must possess the ability to manip- manipulate concepts and to use language for the purpose of communicating wishes, desires, and choice and the capacity to reflect, choose, and accept responsibility for acting to possess the possession of these characteristics plus the capacity to recognize them and others. It explains what means by what, what we mean by speaking of ourselves as persons of moral communities, as social groups, and mutual recognition of personal existence, the development of moral institutions contingent on the recognition of our persons. And we cannot recognize animal rights because they are not able to engage in this kind of moral dialogue. Francis, this is a turn to the contention level. The degrees of human communication makes it impossible for human beings to identify with one another. They can imagine themselves in each other's position. They all can also justify themselves to one another. None of this applies to animals. This rudimentary level of communication between human beings and animals makes possible no more than sympathy for the plight of an animal. Any more developed identification experience, uh, experience of an animal will be likely to prefer other product fans. And you should prefer my, you should prefer my evidence because it's specific and isolates the relevant feature that the community is talking about in my normal reference to the framework, namely that you must be able to practically reflect and have some uh, sense of self-reflection that, or that, or that, or that, that the, the, my friend's evidence outlines that animals don't. There's a disconnect in her case. Her framework talks with these two relevant features of the community, i.e. language communication with the contentional cards about why they're all they're all like living and all these other features, but those there's a disconnect, but those are not talking about the relevant features in the community. And turn. We cannot recognize animals animals as rights holders because they are not being capable of making moral claims against the non-human respond to obligations. And in addition, regardless of our definition, you accept her definition, animals are not the kind of community that has rights because they can't exercise moral claims. Cohen. 
Rights are rights only, uh, only, among, only among beings who can make moral claims against one another. They are necessarily human. Animals are not beings capable of exercising or responding to moral claims. The holders of rights must have the capacity, comrade, rules of duty, governing all. Only the community of beings capable of self restricting judgment can constitute right being. Though humans are members of the members of the community, governed by moral rules, we must not infer that a being has simply and being alive right to its life. The assertion that this is an assertion without a warrant. Now go to the two justification under the standard. First, these arguments do not, do not independently prove why, why communitarianism.